Hey guys, welcome back to Living Tiny. So, as I mentioned in the last video, the video of working with a company is all powers. Um, in my tiny home before, you guys know I did the whole battery, solar panels, charge controller, all that separately. But for the RV, I wanted to do something a little bit more simplistic. And the solar stations have come a really, really, really long way. And I really wanted to give them a, a test, like see how they go. And for this RV, it normally has a 30 amp shore plug, uh, where the All Powers S2000 Pro that I have here has a um, 30 amp shore. So I'm hoping that this should be able to run the RV if everything goes as planned. Now, just to start off, we'll start off with a little bit of the technical facts. So let's read off some of it. Lithium ion batteries, it's 1500 watt hours. It's approximately 14.5 kilograms. I believe it says it comes up to like 32 to 35 pounds. It's really not that heavy for the size of battery that's in it, surprisingly. Um, you can have a max input from the AC of 1500 watts, but it only uses a normal plug, no brick or anything like that. So it fast charges, I believe it's like an hour and a half. It can go from zero to 80, I believe. Again, I will get to that in a little bit, a little bit more technical. I could do 650 watts of solar input, which is awesome. It's got all the USB outputs and all that stuff as usual. It's got the 30 amp RV plug, which is what I really, really, really wanted to do in all the videos that I watched and everything else about the product. There were, no one uses the, like the, the RV plug. I don't know why, but it is what it is. But I have an RV and it needs a plug, so we'll see if it works. And it has four AC outlets. So, Let's open it up and see what it's like a little bit when we get it open. Okay, so first things first, claim your warranty. Obviously very important. You should always go and claim your warranty through the business and everything else. So I'll have to activate my warranty. It says it has four USB-A, two USB-Cs, four AC outlets, the power on and off. Yeah, I'm sure it has all the data in there. No one's ever interested in that. As far as how it's packaged, it's packaged extremely well with some very, very rigid foam. Comes with a nice little carrying kit here that, yep, has all the accessories and everything else to plug in, which obviously from an accessory point of view, you have your car charger. If you want to slow charge it off your car, you have your solar input, and then you have your actual AC input. Awesome that it comes with all of it, and I love the fact that it comes with a nice little box. Because obviously then you don't lose everything. Uh, this unit, I was told, isn't technically a waterproof unit. So, like, using it outside while it's raining would be used at your own risk. But they give you a waterproof bag that goes over the whole thing. So, like, you do have a weatherproof bag, which is pretty awesome, I think. And then as far as the unit itself... There's the unit itself. Now, I'm gonna be honest, it's actually not as heavy as I really thought. I know some of them get really, really heavy and this actually was not bad at all. I, uh, I'm not gonna do any testing this video. It's gonna be put off for a little bit because obviously I have to wait and uh, I gotta get it charged up and everything else. This is the first time I'm literally unboxing it. Yes, Chase, you're a good girl. Hi. Here you go. You could say hi to everybody, hi. Hi, dear Jinxie. Anyway, so um, we will get to doing some videos and we're going to do some actual testing, put it through its paces, uh, do a charge time, see how long it actually takes charging on AC from empty. We'll do some AC testing to see how long, how many watt hours you actually get out of it. It's rated at 1500. None of them ever give you the full 15. So we'll see how efficient it is. But the big one is this one. The 30 amp RV plug, like this is what will make it or break it for this setup. I'm really, really, really hoping that it will run the RV. And uh, I know some people have said they had problems plugging in the actual solar plug while the 30 amp is plugged in. So I have an idea on how to get around that so I don't have to worry about it. Because a lot of people say once you plug in the 30 amp, you physically can't plug in your solar at the same time. So you can't charge while using it, which it allows. But supposedly you can't because the plug blocks it. So I think I have a way around that. If it does, that'll be awesome. 
But other than that, like, the unit's pretty small, which is something else I was looking for. You have your fan, obviously. You have your AC for the 1500 watt uh, charging AC port. You got these nice handles. And I will say this, the rubber feet on the bottom definitely don't, like, it doesn't want to turn. It's very sturdy for what it is. But I, I like it because it was small. I didn't want anything huge because I plan on putting it in the back of the RV and running the whole RV from there. Uh, I'm probably going to use a couple of these AC ports and I'm actually going to turn the AC ports into outlets. So I'll run cords off of these ACs to outlets throughout the RV. So I have a, a few more uh, outlets in the RV. But overall, I am looking forward to it more than anything. So I don't know if I'm going to cut the video here and you'll have to wait for the next one. Or I'm just going to cut it here and then we'll get to some testing at some point in time. But if not, stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Living Tiny. So for the big test was um, to see if the RV would run off of it. I just did a quick test. Everything's plugged in. It's currently draining 37, 38 watts. Um, I don't know what's running in there, so I don't know what's pulling power right this second. Uh, I did test the fan for the furnace. It turns on, all the lights turn on, the sockets all turn on, all that works. So it seems like this will power the RV. Um, I'm going to have to figure out what's draining what, but that's not a big deal really at the end of the day. Not a big problem. Um, this will be coming home with me tonight. We are going to do a full charge and a drain test. I have my watt meter. It was here, so I had to wait. And yeah, and then we'll do a parasitic draw too. So hopefully this whole video isn't a jumbled mess with everything, but you know, got to test it the way I got to test it, right? And unfortunately it's raining. This is not fun. Okay guys, welcome back to Living Tiny. So we are going to do a parasitic draw test on this one. We're gonna turn the AC inverter on and just see. This is the test, the last test I think I'm gonna do because I can't find my watt meter, which sucks. But let's give you... So we're just gonna turn the unit on. And then we are gonna turn the AC on. <laughs> And we're going to listen to Jinxie wine over here. Okay, so we're going to set a two-hour timer. And we're going to leave it running for two hours and just see how much battery it drains. And then we'll know how much approximately the inverter takes Well, it's just doing nothing. Because there is no hookup, there's no drain, there's no anything. So, we'll come back in two hours and see how this is. And then we'll wrap it up. Alright guys, we're back. That's two hours. Alarm just went off. Let's see what the AC inverter locked. I'm gonna say this though before we get into this. As soon as the AC gets turned on, the fans get turned on. So it's really not a fair test because the fans are gonna drain the battery. That doesn't give you a 100% accurate reading on the actual, like the inverter pulling energy. But what do we got? So from 100 to 96 in two hours. So 4% battery loss in two hours. Hmm. I wouldn't say that's great. Because I've seen other reviews where you'd get about like two to three percent every four hours. So this would be a little bit on the lower side. But again, I have a feeling it's because of the fans. And I don't know if the fans would get shut off based on load or anything like that. So that's a question to be done. Now, I will say this because I did find it. I am going to do an AC load test. I should technically recharge it probably the rest of the way. But for that 4%, I just don't have time to do it right this second. And I'd like the video to be as smooth as possible. So we got our little watt meter. We are going to put it in. As you can see on the writing, it will be upside down, which kind of sucks. What do we got here? What are these settings? I can't even read this. Well, let's throw this on here. We're going to uh, put this little heater. It says it's a 500 watt heater. So we'll see what it ends up pulling. And if I can figure out exactly. I just want to see if we can see how many watt hours it pulls. So let's turn it on and see what we start reading here.
so that it's currently saying that it is okay we got to find the right one here Okay, well, I guess that's the one, actually, where it says kilowatt hours. And we'll see. So it is currently pulling... ...415 watts? No, hold on. 461 watts. I'm so sorry this is upside down. It's kind of inconvenient how they put these plugs. I will be the first one to say that. I don't know why they're all upside down. It, yeah. Anyway, so 461 watts. We are going to set it over to see how many watt hours it totally racks up when it's all said and done right here. And then we'll go from there. We are going to run this battery until she shuts down. Uh, as you can see, it's saying it's running 455 watts. So we'll see how it is. The fans have definitely ramped up too. We'll come back. We'll come back and see what we get. I know it wasn't a full charge, so we're gonna get a little bit less than obviously what it's rated, but we could get a pretty good idea on the efficiency of it. I have seen one other video that it said it was around 80 to 83% efficient, which is a little bit lower. Um, but once this test is complete and we're done, um, the next time, uh, the, after the test, we will do a conclusion on the whole thing. So I'll stop chopping everything together. Okay, so it's only been a few minutes and I just noticed, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but it is making quite the audible sound now. Don't know why, but there's quite the hum. And like in the front, you can hear it even more. Still pulling the same wattage. I am a little confused as to why it's making so much noise. It is a little bit louder than a lot of the other ones, but I guess we'll see where and we'll come back when it's done. Okay guys, so the test finished this morning and I went and checked it. It ran 988 kilowatt hours. I made that mistake last night. It's not watt hours, my meter, it's kilowatt hours. So obviously one kilowatt hour is a thousand watt hours. Um, so I'm a little unimpressed. Um, the fact that this got less than a thousand watt hours when it's rated at 1500 doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm a little confused as to why it ran that low and I will be reaching out to all powers to be like, hey, is this a common thing? Um, now, to sum everything up, the fact that it has the RV plug, huge benefit, like benefits, right? Like that is the bonus. Um, a lot of people say in their videos, as soon as you plug the RV in though, you can't use the solar input to charge while using it. They're 100% correct. You can't. Now there is an adapter on Amazon, which I will show you in an upcoming video that will give you, it's basically an adapter that goes on the 30 amp and just extends it so it's a little bit deeper. Gives you about three inches of clearance. So once that goes on, I should have room to use the solar. We'll see once I get solar, if that works. As far as the AAC plugs and everything else, they're upside down, which makes obviously plugging anything in sticks down over top of down here, which is a bit confusing. Not really sure why they do that when there's nothing above it. There's no charging or anything on the top of the unit, so it doesn't really make sense why you wouldn't go the standard way. Um, the screen is easy and clear to read. Uh, it is quite audible when you are using it, which again, I think it's just the fan wine personally, but again, not 100% sure on that. I would definitely say it's not quiet. Um, it kind of fits in that niche though, where like 1500 watt hours isn't common. You kind of get the thousand watt hours or you get the 2000 watt hours. So like it kind of fills that hole. And because it has the 30 amp plug and it does work, that kind of might make it for a lot of people. Um, honestly, real world, because that's what I told them when I, when I told them I was doing the video. And yes, I did pay for this. Uh, but when I told them I was doing the video, I told them I was going to be brutally honest with it all. And it's one of those things where it's usable, but I'm not fully impressed. 
Uh, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. I'm going to run another AC drain test on it and see if the results are different. Uh, I will charge it to full, even though it was only 4% down. I really don't think it would have knocked 500 amp or watt hours off the battery for 4%. doesn't make sense. Um, so we're going to have to try that again. Maybe I can try to find something that will be a little bit more usable on the drain and we'll, we'll see. Um, but overall, like I said, for the money and where it fits, it's not horrible. Um, would I recommend it? The company in general? Yes, 100%. All Powers has been around for a long time. They're a reputable brand. And I'm sure if I have any problems or anything like that, I'll just reach out and they'll take care of it. So would I buy it again? Yes. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing newer models, maybe with a little bit more watt hours or expandability with this 30 amp plug that is a huge huge selling point and i don't care what anybody says i would have loved to see these outlets flip the other way i don't know if that's a norm or if that's a mix-up but overall for the unit being only 32 pounds 2500 cycles like you'll easily get five to ten years out of the unit and shouldn't have any real issues unless something else happens um, originally I was told that there was a five-year warranty in the package. It says there's a two-year warranty. So that's a little bit confusing. Um, I will reach out and see if I can figure out with all powers, how long the warranty actually is. But the, the, the part that sells it for me is the pass through and everything else we know works. There's lots of videos out there that'll test all this stuff that, like the AC stuff, you can put the 1800 watts to it and it'll take it. There's people running much more and it takes it. So from a usable point of view, it's fantastic. Uh, 650 watt input is high, especially for a lot of the stuff around this price range. A lot of them used to only get two to 400 watts, which to me, if you cannot charge the battery from zero to full in one day, like sun cycle, then it kind of defeats the purpose. I shouldn't have to wait two days to get a full charge on these things. And during sun, about three to three and a half hours will charge this battery, let alone the AC input. There's a lot out there that have these big bricks and everything, and the AC input's only like 600 watts, and it still takes four hours for it to charge via AC, where this is 1,500 watts, and it charges from zero to 80 in an hour, and full in an hour and a half. So that is huge. So for me and my use with the RV, a lot of it will be solar, but I'm also going to be using it on AC and letting it just pass through the unit because this will power everything I need. Um, longevity wise, we'll see how long it holds up. Uh, like I said, would I buy it again? Yes. Do I look forward to hopefully seeing improvements on this from all powers? Definitely. I, I know there is a unit that's bigger than this. Um, that I probably would have sprung for if I wasn't kind of just throwing this RV together right now. Um, it's more of a financial situation, obviously. That's real world, right? Um, but knowing that this will run my entire RV is the big win for me. Um, that, that's all that really matters. So we'll see how it holds up. I look forward to seeing what All Powers has coming out. I have heard that there is a new folding solar panel coming to market soon, and I'm hoping that I can get my hands on one of them because it will match this unit very, very well, and I think it would match really good with the RV because I've decided I'm not putting permanent panels on the RV roof because I don't want to drill holes in it. So I think the fact that I can use foldable panels and be able to move it around the RV depending on where I'm parked is actually more practical. So I really look forward to testing that and I will be doing more testing with this once I get the solar and just seeing how everything functions. So that being said, I know this video was chopped up and put in different sections and some of it, the video quality is crap. I am recording off my phone sadly and for some reason it just doesn't record great videos. So I apologize for that. I'm sorry for this drag on whole sector but again it is what it is that being said all powers has the reputation behind them and everything else so let's see what happens in the near future i definitely think this is a winner 
I would definitely buy it again, and uh, for the few flaws that I have pointed out, which pretty much is what everybody else points out to in their videos, I, 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 out of 10, I'd give it a good 7, 7.5. It checks a lot of the boxes, I think, for a lot of people, and the RV plug was the one that I saw not many videos actually using, and I really wanted to show people, does it work? And will it run your RV? I plug my RV in and it seems to run everything. I know I didn't do a whole lot of testing with like heavy load through the RV, but everything else holds up load test wise. You can check all the other videos on the internet for it. So really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't question that working either. So I will uh, hopefully see you on the next one. Hopefully the next one will be solar or maybe more stuff for the RV. That being said, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm still looking for a name for the RV, so hit it up. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.